If you're in the market for an inexpensive paint thickness gauge, then stay tuned because this video is for you. Good day everyone, Garage King here, and today I'm going to do a review on a paint thickness gauge I bought. So let's take a look at what I got in the mail. So this one's by R&D Instruments. Um, it does say it's got an accuracy of 2.5% backlight built in, and it's from 0.1 UM uh, micron to 1500 microns, and it says auto uh, FENNF. So that means ferrous and non-ferrous, so like steel and aluminum, basically. So let's see what this thing is about. So let's take it all out of the box. I don't wanna drop it. I didn't pay a lot for this one because I know these paint gauges can get up to like a lot of money. So this one I paid uh, about 44 or $45 US for, so it actually didn't cost me that much money. So it was great. Uh, oh yeah, I guess we need batteries. Okay, so we're gonna have to put some batteries in it. Let's see what else it came with here. So we have a coding thickness guide, user manual, uh, Russian, I recognize that, so that's good. So it even has a, a Russian manual. So if anyone uh, speaks Russian, uh, this was a really good deal. And then it has, uh, I guess these are just for testing it. So standard ferrous, so this would be a steel plate. Uh, what is this one? Standard aluminum, so an aluminum plate. And then I guess a whole bunch of different thickness plastic, just to see for doing the depth. Oh yeah, so we got 500, 100, 250, 50, 1000. So a bunch of different uh, thicknesses so we can test it. So you know what? Let's test it. So it takes four double A's. And it turns on. I guess it's zeros. Uh, and there's our microns, our mil. So mil or microns, whatever scale you want to use. Uh, Fe must be ferrous. Uh, single reading and I guess continuous reading. So let's see how accurate this thing actually is. So I'm gonna remove the standard ferrous, which is uh, the steel. So let's take this out. And put that right there. And now what we can do is from our, which, which one should I pick guys? Which one should I pick? Let's pick this one first, thousand. So that's, a, that's actually fairly thick. So we'll lay it on top, okay. Now let's turn our machine on or our instrument. There we go, let it zero. And then, so this should read a thousand when I, uh, when I put it on. Wow, that's pretty close. All right, and now that it's at a thousand, I guess if I want to convert it to mil, that would be the same as, oh, I guess it doesn't convert. So then you'd have to remeasure it in mil, that's fine. 39.3 uh, mil. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now let's go to the continuous and let's see if we kind of move it around if it, oh yeah, I guess we can move it around until we get a good reading. Okay, so let's go back to our micron and we should be at a thousand, so for continuous. And then once we get, there we go. Wow, so this thing is uh, very accurate, but you know what, that was a thousand, so it's pretty thick. So let's make this work a little harder. Let's take our thousand away and let's bring it down to, what do you think next? 500, nah, still too thick. Uh, maybe, maybe 250, okay, sure, yeah, okay, guys, we'll do 250. All right, let's do 250. So let's let it zero itself out, there we go. And we want our reading, so this one's a 250, 257, interesting. Okay, so it's pretty accurate. Now, what if we go to continuous? Because maybe, is the plastic not perfect? So 257, 256, 258, 259. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now let's just quickly, let's just go to the thinnest one. 
50 microns. So this is like super, super thin. So I think paint is thicker than this. So let's, uh, should be at 50. Wow, that's pretty good. So that's uh, definitely quite accurate uh, for sure. And I, I moved it there, so let's see if I, that's really well. Now it did say it's auto detect. So let's keep this fine sheet here and let's take out the standard aluminum and let's check it with the standard aluminum. And let's see if it auto detects. So that's the aluminum. And now we're gonna put it on the aluminum. So now, cause right here we can see it says uh, FE for ferrous. So let's see if it goes to aluminum. Oh, it did. It went NF, which is uh, non-ferrous. Uh, it's maybe not as accurate, 47.5, but that's still really good. We're only 2.5 off. So that's still, uh, it's still really, really good. Now I should note when you have it on the singular one, if you're, if you're really quick and kind of sloppy, you can actually get a wrong reading. You put it like this, look at that, it's 110. And then now when I set it down, it stays at 110, it doesn't adjust. So it's almost better to put it at the continuous. So this way, if you're kind of sloppy here, you know, you're moving around, it'll move around until you actually put it right on it. So there we go, it's 49, uh, there we go, 50, which is what the, what the pad was. Now, the thing with this we have to remember too, our units of measurement, so microns, that's one thousandth of a millimeter, and mils, which is one thousandth of an inch. So either metric or imperial, so that's great. So now, let's take it outside to my truck and let's see what we get. Okay, so we're out here at the truck and we're gonna measure my Toyota paint thickness. 94.7 microns, which is, you know what, that's pretty good because uh, paint from the factory is about 100 and the clear coat's usually 35 to 50, which is half of that. So this thing is actually pretty, uh, pretty accurate. Now, you know what would be interesting? Let's see, I painted a hood. Let's go check it out because I know I put extra clear coat on the hood. So here's it the hood thicker. that I painted. Now, I did like two, three layers of clear coat when I was painting it to make it nice and thick. So this should be thicker than 100 for sure. So let's check it out. There we are, 264, so this is thick paint, because I know I put a lot of clear coat. So this is actually, uh, it's really good. Now let's go to the factory paint where I did not, I did not touch it here, the factory. This should be very thin, because we're actually losing clear here. Well, there we go, it's about 100. Now let's go to here, where we're losing some clear. 89, yes. Put the clear coat really thick on these wheels when I painted them. So let's see what these wheels say. Oh yeah, 430. Now, if we look at the paint on the front of this Honda, we can see we're actually losing clear coat. Now the clear coat's still there. So let's take a measurement and see what, uh, see what happens here. Let's try to get it down where we can, uh, should be pretty thin. 77, 80, that's right. Now let's try to move it over to a place where the clear coat's still here. Should be closer to 100 maybe. There we go. So I'd say this is a really good, uh, really good paint gauge. Let's check the paint thickness on my motorcycle. See what happens. And yes, motorcycle paint is a little bit thicker. So 127 microns. Let's convert that or let's see if we can go. So how many mils would that be? Well, let's see. So about five mil thickness. Let's check the thickness of my paint on my snowblower. 35 microns. What about a shop tool? This is powder coated, it's a shop tool. About 27 microns. What about my air compressor? Let's check this thing, powder coated as well. I expect it around 30 range, I guess, like the rest. Oh, a little bit thicker on the air compressor, close to 50 microns. Now, what about this catch can? This catch can is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Anodized. So it should be really, really thin. So it's not a ferrous material. Let's see. And there we are, it's only 14, it's just anodized. So the thickness is uh, really thin and that's it, NF for non-ferrous. So this thing works, this thing works great. Let's see, uh, what about the supercharger part here? Oh, quite a bit thicker. And it's aluminum cover, so NF. So that's great, non-ferrous. 
So this machine or this instrument, it's uh, R&D. That's what's called it, Zoom and R&D Instruments. Uh, model number is TC200. I have to give it some big thumbs up because it, uh, to me, this works great. And when I'm doing detailing, this way I'll know how much clear coat I'm stripping off uh, a vehicle. So I think this is a really good tool to have. And you know what? It didn't cost me that much. It was about $45 US. That's not a lot of money. And that included shipping. And I'm in Canada. I'll cut in to prevent myself from rambling. But basically, in a nutshell, this is a really good tool. Now, as I say at the end of all of my videos, if you like my videos, I would really appreciate if you would consider subscribing. Any comments, questions, or concerns are always answered below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it.